Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. Today we're looking at the P83 Wanod sent to me by JNG Sales for review. This gun is chambered in 9x18 Makarov. It's got some interesting history, some interesting design features. And today in this review, we're gonna do some accuracy testing, some velocity testing, and we're gonna find out some pretty interesting things about the performance of this gun. So stick around. P83 Wanod came from Lusnik, Poland. I probably didn't say that right, but I'm trying. Imported by Century Arms International, as you can see there on the frame. This gun actually was manufactured in 1987 at the height of the Cold War. That makes this kind of a Cold War relic, and I think that is pretty sweet. As I said before, there's some pretty interesting design features um, around this gun, and I'll talk about those shortly. But as I mentioned at the outset, this gun was sent to me by JNG Sales for review. They may still have some of these. I'm not sure if they do. When they did, they were for a really good price. And I actually showed this gun to you in my bug out bag breakdown when I talked about the VanQuest uh, Falconer 27 pack. This gun is part of that pack. It's going right back into it after this review. As I said in that review, it was offered for a really great price from JNG Sales, and it may have, that good price might have sold the gun out. I don't know. But go check over there and see if they have any left. If they don't, you know, check out all the other cool stuff there. JNG's got great deals on some excellent guns, um, not the least of which is their SKS that they've got a special on right now. But we're not talking about those guns right now. We're talking about the Wanod. So let's get back to it. What immediately caught my eye about this gun and what really sets it apart from a whole lot of other Makarov-like pistols is the frame. The frame that this gun is actually built on, which I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's actually completely made out of sheet metal. Look at that trigger guard. That is very much a sheet metal trigger guard. It's very clear. You can see all of this piece under here. You can kind of see where they've ground away the weld. And if we take the gun down, you'll actually be able to see that much better. You see a little bit of a weld mark, which on the outside was ground away, but you can see it quite clearly on the inside of the frame. So again, why would I be interested in a gun that was made out of welded together sheet metal? It's just such a strange and unusual thing. I mean, when you think about it, typically most guns we knew, or traditionally guns were made out of what? They're milled out of steel, right? That's kind of what we came to understand and what became the standard for handguns rifles or whatever. They're milled out of steel, the receivers and the frames are. But as we moved away from that uh, down the road, we obviously are, became very familiar, very comfortable with polymer pistols, such as this one right here, my daily carry, the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, completely made out of polymer, right? So polymer is supposedly weaker than steel, right? Well, I guess sheet metal would be as well. However, Polymers hold, holding up great for so many firearms out there, and guess what? Sheet metal is too, at least on this P83 Wanod. And this gun has performed flawlessly with almost all the ammunition I've put through it, and uh, it seems to be a very durable gun, regardless of what seems like a weakness in that sheet metal frame. <laughs>
as I said before, comes from Poland where this gun is quite standard in uh, police forces and armies. Um, and it's also seen use in wars around the world. So this gun is a very common one, uh, overseas at least. These foreign guns, these unusual guns are always really interesting to me when I get one in hand and start you know, being able to shoot it. It's always quite fun getting familiar with what other countries use and what, uh, what is standard to them. The P83 is still in the hands of police in Poland. However, many of them are being replaced by things like the Glock 19 and other guns. So for that reason, some of us are able to get a hold of them for a really nice price coming in from Century Arms and places like J&G Sales. It's got a very European style magazine release down here at the base of the gun. You can see a magazine, empty magazine going in there right now and releasing just like that. Just press it and it pops right into your palm. It's actually quite ergonomic. I definitely prefer guns that have the magazine release right here on the frame where you can press that with your thumb and then release it or just drop it straight to the ground. You break your grip a little bit in order to do that. However, you don't have to use two hands. So if you are limited in that sense, you can always get your work done with just this one hand while you're drawing the magazine and placing it in. So I definitely prefer the magazine release right there on the frame, but Again, we're not talking about sort of American standards here, John Browning designs here. We're talking about more European standards. The Makarov pistols uh, definitely follow that sort of European standard. And so that mag release on the frame is definitely to be expected. And spending some time shooting with it, I honestly don't mind it too much. It's got a classic feel to it, a little more of a manual feel to it. And uh, you know, if you get used to it, it works well and it goes fast. Sky is just too beautiful behind me right now. I had to switch directions. A couple more points on the design of this gun. Uh, you can see that it is sort of single action and double action. So when you uh, release that decocker slash safety, press that up like that, it decocks the gun, sending the hammer forward. Doesn't fire around, I tested that out. And then you bring that safety back down to put it into fire mode. That, you see that trigger moved forward when I did that just now. Once you do that, you've got a long double action pull. You can watch that hammer as it moves back and creeps back. Another feature worth pointing out is the loaded chamber indicator built into this gun. That extractor right there sort of sinks in when there's a round in the chamber. And that causes this little peg right here to pop out, which is something you can feel and see. And whenever you know, whenever you see that out, you know that there is a loaded round in the chamber. Through all the rounds fired today, the slide has locked back on empty magazines, making it very clear and easy to tell when it's time to reload, which is also a great feature. My gun came with two of these steel eight round magazines. I don't know how much you're gonna have to pay if you try to get a third or fourth one on uh, the secondary market. I'm sure they're out there. Probably J&G sales had them at one time or may, maybe they still do but uh, these magazines seem to feed all the rounds I put through them just perfectly, no issues with them. Sights on this gun are extremely basic, but they're pretty quick to pick up. I haven't had any issue with them today. Uh, in semi-dark light, they work really well. You can see at the top of the slide, this whole strip right here is all textured, making it so that that does not catch light very easily. It doesn't reflect light. It makes it much easier to sort of pick up those sights as you're raising them up. And definitely I can see that the front sight also has a slight bit of texturing on it. It's difficult to point out in camera, but it does have a slight bit of texturing to it as well. Making, making for some very rudimentary, but also quite accurate sights. And I found these to be definitely dead on through all the rounds that I shot today. 
basic field stripping of the P83 Juan on is actually really simple. It's really similar actually to that of the Walder PPK. We'll go ahead and clear the gun. There's a loaded magazine, set that aside. The chamber should definitely be empty and we'll double check that. It is empty, as I said. Now, disassembly, like I said before, is really easy. Here's what you do. Here's a little takedown switch right there. You can see it on both sides of the gun. So all you do is grab it from both sides, pinch it like that, and pull it straight down. From this point, all you gotta do is pull the slide all the way back, lift it up a little bit, and then bring it forward and off. And I'll demonstrate that now. Slide it all the way back, lift it forward, and slide it off, just like that. That is the entire field strip, or at least the basic field strip. Of course, you can take it down further than this, but for most folks, to do all the cleaning you need to do, this is about as far as you'll need to go. Reassembly is just the reverse of it, and it's very easy. Just reinsert that spring until it gets captured right there at the front of the slide. Pull it straight all the way back, or I should say in this lifted arrangement all the way back. Lay it back down onto the frame and let it go back home just like that, and you're back on at this point. Send that piece right back in, and you are fully reassembled. The polymer grips on this gun definitely work fine. They feel really nice, actually. Uh, a little bit of texturing on the frame, or on the grip, as you can see right there, but uh, they are polymer, so they're not gonna grab you back very much. You can also see that those polymer grips are screwed on. It's possible that there are some aftermarket grips that you can buy for this gun to give it a slightly different, different contour. I haven't really done any shopping around for those, but if they're out there, they might be worth taking a look at. I've been getting some serious, serious slide bite from this gun tonight as I've been shooting it. Uh, that hammer just travels way too far back for the palm of my hand. It seems to want to kiss the back of my, the web of my hand every single time I shoot it, which is, again, just kind of digging into the web of my hand right there, as you can see. I've got uh, plenty <laughs> of flesh scraped away there. In fact, I've been scraping flesh off of the hammer right here, which is kind of gross to say and think about. But hey, it is what it is. I'm definitely gonna make some modifications to that hammer right there. I'm just gonna dremel that up a bit, maybe take a few millimeters off of it until that hammer cannot possibly bite me when it comes back. Uh, at that point, I think this will be a perfectly ergonomic gun for me. Your hands might be slightly smaller than mine, um, perhaps you'll put this in your wife's hands. I think this is a great option uh, to make your wife's gun or a, a, a smaller person's handgun, perhaps a defensive gun, a concealed carry gun, something like that. And in that case, I don't think that you're going to find any issues with slide bite from smaller hands. Because mine are so large, because I have a tendency to choke way, way up on there, I do tend to get some hammer bite from guns like this where the hammer does travel far back. Credit where credit is due, there is no magazine disconnect safety on this gun. So, if you have no magazine in there, but perhaps around in the chamber, guess what? It'll fire just fine. That is great news. Uh, you don't always get that with imports, you don't always get that with handguns. I like it when you have no magazine disconnect safety. I just don't see the point ever in having a magazine disconnect safety. How is the trigger on it? A little bit of creep. And I would say that it's not a bad break. It's quite comfortable, I would say. Let's bring it over this direction. Watch the finger. Yeah, it's actually quite a comfortable trigger, especially in single action mode like this. There's only a slight bit of creep as you're preparing to break that trigger and only a little bit of uptake. Yeah, it's a pretty nice trigger. I actually like it quite a lot. In double action mode, that is a long, kind of stagey trigger, and it's, uh, it's difficult to really manage it and kind of stay on target as you're doing that, because it is long and heavy. And getting just the pad of your finger on there doesn't quite give me enough control over it. I feel like I need to wrap all the way around to the knuckle in order to grab that tightly enough and then be able to hold that really nicely and firm as I'm doing that long double action take up before it breaks. I've used up all the daylight I've got. I want to say a few last words about the P83 Wanod as the sun and all the daylight is going away. This is a fun gun to shoot. I have not spent much time in the past with the 9x18 cartridge. I must say it is 
fairly soft shooting, especially for the weight of this frame. It feels good, it seems to hit my targets with enough force that uh, I do have some confidence in it. Uh, as a concealed carry gun, and that's kind of the, the main role that I see for this, uh, if you're gonna put it into sort of a daily role, I should say, it would definitely be concealed carry. Um, it's a little bit on the heavy side, it's a little bit on the thick side. It's along the lines of like the Glock 26, 27, um, but it doesn't have quite the same capacity at eight rounds and certainly not the same amount of power as let's say the Glock 27 has. It's far more affordable than a whole lot of other guns you might be choosing though, so there are a lot of reasons to look at this and seriously consider it as a concealed carry weapon. I would also definitely recommend it as a bug out kit type of weapon or some other type of kit weapon. I would definitely suggest this gun for that type of a role. It's affordable, it shoots with plenty enough power. It's got a good eight round magazine plus that spare magazine that I showed you before. The rounds cost around $15 a box, sometimes up to 20 depending on the brand that you pick up. Um, but if you consider that, that's not so much more than say uh, 380 actually, probably even less. And these days it's on par with a lot of brands at nine millimeter. So overall, I think that the P83 Wanod is a good choice for that handful of rolls that I mentioned earlier, and it is just a fun shooter. Once again, I thank J&G Sales for sending this gun out for testing and review. I'm the late Boy Scout. You can barely see my face, but it is still me. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you guys later. Today we've got the Type 56 SKS.